All right, so the way this is gonna work is that uh, we're gonna start lifting this engine with the transmission. You still have those two bolts in the back on the bell housing bolts that are still connecting the transmission to the engine. And we're gonna lift enough until the two studs on our motor mounts underneath here uh, clear the subframe. And once that happens, we're gonna get our jack. I'm gonna have a transmission jack. I'm gonna put it underneath the transmission, lift and support the transmission. Then we're gonna go back there, remove those two bolts in the back. Then after that, we should be able to pull this engine out and lift it out of here. Alrighty. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. We shall find out soon enough. I go underneath and check. Just about another inch. Clear on this side. This side as well. Just gonna get the transmission jack. All right, remember, we don't need to lift this, we just need to support the transmission. All right, next we'll remove the two remaining bell housing bolts that are still here. We should be able to fish our engine out. All right, that should do it. Let's see if we can wiggle this loose. We cannot. completely loose now we should be able all right that took some wiggling but it's free at least I think it's free <laughs> all right we're just gonna go slow and make sure nothing is catching oh you know what our torque converter looks like it wants to come out with the engine I know something we forgot. I forgot to remove the two uh, coolant hoses that go to our heater core from the engine side. Coolant will more than likely come leaking out of these once you remove these. All right, now we should be able to pull this out further so that those two studs clear everything. At the same time, make sure our harmonic balancer doesn't damage our AC condenser. And then start lifting. Make sure you take your time and go slow just in case. There are other things we forgot to remove. I think we got it. I'm just going to wait here a little bit make sure all that coolant drains out before I completely remove it. You see on the back of these engines, you know, actually I was suspecting that, see this piece here? This is aluminum and a lot of Subarus this cover back here is plastic. I guess they changed it around and around the, this, this is a 2003, so. I guess they switched to, to these uh, aluminum covers for the 2003s. But on a lot of older Subarus, this is plastic and this thing warps. Then you end up having a huge leak from here. Now there's some, some leaking here, uh, but it looks like this is from either the, the rear main seal. Or I guess there's another cover here that I guess there's a little bit of a leakage, but I think it's mainly actually it's the rear main seal that's seeping a little bit. I guess uh, once I take this off, I'll be able to tell for sure. But anyway, on a lot of them, the plastic ones, they leak and they leak a lot. Now, I was suspecting that this had a plastic one and it leaked and then that's how we uh, came to having a seized engine. But it just looks like that this engine was uh, just uh, just seized up due to prop, uh, poor maintenance. Uh, that, that oil that was in there looked uh, really awful and oil, old and uh, that's probably what did this engine in. And obviously these are the two studs I was uh, telling you about when we were underneath and removing the bolts on the stud, the, the nuts for the bell housing. These are where the two 14 millimeter nuts were. And then right above them were the two 14 millimeter bolts. Nothing goes into here. Then up again, these are the two bolts we removed last. 
And these are the two bolts that hold on your uh, starter motor. All right, I think I need to mention that this is very important. If you are removing the engine and the two studs on the bottom catch the tor torque converter and move it around, make sure you push this back in and that this is seated all the way. You know, you turn and twist and push on it until it clicks into place. If you're unsure at all whether this is properly seated or not, pull it out, look at it, line it back up, press it in again, and then uh, just turn and uh, push it in until it uh, snaps into place. There are also some uh, videos on YouTube you can look at to see how this is properly done because uh, if you don't do this correctly and this is not seated in all the way, you run the risk of damaging your transmission and also your engine. Mm -hmm.